Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we'll be discussing the sacraments of the Catholic Church, and today we're talking about baptism. We'll go over infant baptism, the issue of baptizing people too young to give their consent. Now, again, as I said a couple episodes ago, it helps to understand the doctrine of original sin in order to understand why baptism is so important. The teaching of the Catholic Church is that because of the first sin, every last human being, with only a couple of exceptions, was born into a state of sinfulness known as original sin. As long as original sin remains on our souls, we can never enter heaven. Because of this, it is absolutely essential that this sin be removed by God's grace. Some would say that God can just give a special grace to anyone to save them from original sin, and I don't necessarily deny that that's possible. However, again, the important thing isn't what it's possible for God to do, but what God has promised to do. God has promised to save people through baptism. He's made no such promise about saving them without it. Because of this, we're faced with a serious dilemma. Children are born with original sin on their souls, and that means that they won't be able to go to heaven when they die unless the sin is removed somehow. Given all of this, it would be cruel to not baptize your children as infants, and in fact it's a sin. Yes, it's a sin to withhold baptism from your children just because, in your view, they're too young. In fact, anyone can baptize any child provided that the child is in danger of dying. However, if they're not in danger of dying, you're not allowed to baptize a child if you don't have the consent of their parents. That's basically how infant baptism works. Now, there are several arguments that people have advanced against infant baptism, so this seemed like as good a time as any to deal with the stronger ones. Unfortunately, I was only able to find one argument that had any real strength behind it. Some Protestants reject the notion of infant baptism because unlike adult baptism, it doesn't represent an interior conversion on the part of the person being baptized. So someone is welcomed into the church without actually being committed to Jesus. Soon you have a church full of people who have no commitment to Jesus or the faith. While it's undeniable that a lack of commitment to Jesus and the faith has indeed run rampant in nearly all Western churches for the last half century at least, infant baptism has been around for a lot longer than that. In fact, I'd say this objection to infant baptism really has a couple of big problems. The first problem with this argument is that people are perfectly capable of changing their minds about the faith. Even if a person has made a commitment to Jesus, that's no guarantee that he, or indeed most of the church, will stay faithful. Likewise, even if a person is baptized without making any sort of commitment to Jesus, that's no guarantee that they won't make one later. In fact, the parents are supposed to train their children to do exactly that, so we can't say for certain that the results of infant baptism will be bad, in the same way that we can't say for certain that our favorite toy will still be where we left it yesterday, now that our little brother has had his chance to crawl around and get into stuff. The human equation messes this kind of thing up. However, a bigger problem is that the point of the church isn't to be a gathering of people who are better than everyone else, and the point of baptism isn't to act as a sort of oath that one takes before entering this elite club. The church is not for saving saints, but for saving sinners. It's a place where sinners go when they realize how desperately they need forgiveness, mercy, and the chance to be saved, so of course the people there aren't going to be perfect. That was never part of the deal. In any case, none of this matters anyway, because baptism is still for the purpose of wiping out original sin from our souls, not just a pledge of allegiance to our new club. If it can wipe out the original sin of an adult, it can do the same thing for a child. The only response to this that I can imagine would be that the child can't be baptized unless they can agree to it, but remember, in Christianity we believe in a God who sent his son to pay a price that none of us could pay. He paid that price on behalf of us. Because of this, we know that one person can act as another person's representative in dealing with divine matters. Therefore, so can parents for their children. Next time, are there any good arguments against baptism being needed for salvation? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.